I feel like every time Final Fantasy XV gets brought up, people say, yeah, it was okay, but it was a bit unfocused and the combat was clunky. Final Fantasy XIII Versus would have been way better. I completely disagree. Having finally completed the game three years after its release, I can safely say that Final Fantasy XV is a masterpiece. Hell yeah. <sighs> Magnificent. The premise of FF15 is perfect. It's just four guys on a road trip. Four dudes just hanging out, being buds, driving their car down the road, going on camping trips, and fighting demons. It's so simple, but it works. I'm sure it gets a bit more complicated later, but it always comes back to just four guys on a road trip. I think the thing I appreciate most about Final Fantasy games in general is the characters, and FF15 nails that the best of all. The four main characters are extraordinarily likable, and everyone else in the game? I don't know, I don't care. I guess there's a couple of cute girls or whatever, and then there's the main bad guy who's like that weird Shakespearean evil, and he sounds like Scar from The Lion King. Now, about that ring. Life's not fair, is it? But 90% of the game focuses around these four guys. You got your generic, slightly emo anime pretty boy, the spunky Shota type blonde haired friendly rascal type, the stoic, intelligent, strategic guy with the glasses, and then you got your big hunky man with a big hunky sword and a big hunky six pack. Also, they're all dressed in black because they're cool. My favorite thing in fiction is when the writers know that the subject they're dealing with is silly, but they still care a lot about it, so they just go all out with it in the best way. That's why I love Sonic Adventure 2, that's why I love Marvel movies. They're silly and self-aware, but they don't shove it in your face like something like Deadpool or the more recent Sonic games, where they're like, ha ha ha, our jokes are so funny, look at this fourth wall breaking we're doing. That guy's getting stabbed in the face, isn't violence funny? Great fiction, in my opinion, tackles that silliness in a way that's sincere, a way that's just completely genuine. All right, you hate bugs. Me? Yeah, can't stand them. Same here, icky. A way where, even though everyone knows the characters and story are silly, they still try their best to make an impactful story with depth and emotional integrity and all that stuff you need for good storytelling. But it's not just the storytelling that makes FF15 great, it's the attention to detail. Final Fantasy games have always had a lot of different ideas crammed into them, and obviously the teams over at Square Enix put a lot of time and effort in all of them. But I feel like they really went the extra mile with FF15. It's amazing that we got a package as fleshed out and cohesive as we did after the development cycle that FF15 had. A lot of people say that FF15 is an unfinished game, and I say, how? In what way? People say the characters' backstories aren't fully explained, half the game is in the DLC, the story is an incohesive mess, and yeah, I'd be lying if I said there weren't moments during the story where I was completely lost on how certain things were connected, or where certain side characters came from. But then I'd always think back to myself, but who cares? This is just about four guys having fun on a road trip. I mean, there's a little bit more. The reason they're on the road trip is so that the main character can go meet up with his waifu and get married and bring peace and happiness back to the world. But that's really all you need to know. Just knowing that much makes the entire story understandable and relatable to me. And anytime I'm confused about motivations or certain plot devices, I'm just like, oh yeah, it's because Noct wants to be with his waifu and overthrow the oppressive government. Also, these three guys are helping him because they're his royal guard. Because, oh yeah, I forgot to mention he's also a prince. But that's not important. None of the details are that important because, again, 90% of the game just focuses on the interactions between these four guys. Other Final Fantasies and just other JRPGs in general tend to dwell on and on about all this lore and mythos and backstory and just all this stuff I don't care about. I just care about this fun road trip these guys are having. And this isn't just me grasping at straws either. The developers really wanted to drive home this idea of the game mainly being about four guys on a road trip. That's why the game opens up with them pushing their broken down car down the road while Stand By Me plays in the background. That's why the first photograph you take in the game is of the four guys posing in front of the regalia. That's why the game ends with one last camp out before the final battle. And that's why it has the storybook ending where Stand By Me plays yet again during the credits. But getting back to that attention to detail I mentioned earlier, look at this food. Look at it. It looks so good. There's a side quest in the game where you need to make the perfect cup of ramen, and it's basically the best side quest I've ever played in a video game. Not because it's particularly fun or exciting, just because I love the situation. First, Gladio's all like, Something dawned on me when I was on my own. Any food you make tastes better when you use good ingredients, right? Then, if you take something already delicious like cup noodles and add in the finest, freshest ingredients, what do you get? The ultimate flavor experience. So I ask you, Noct, what's your favorite ingredient? I was all like, it's the egg. 
because of course it's the egg. So Gladio's all like, We need to go to the highest peak of the highest mountain and get the eggs from the nest of the legendary divine beast, Vomido. So you do. And the whole time you're going up the mountain, everyone's complaining about it. Just think about what's waiting at the top. Let me guess, one aching back and two very sore feet. And then you finally get to the very top and get the eggs, and then right afterwards you walk through this giant open area. Perfect for fighting a giant bird monster whose eggs you just stole, right? Nah, that's it. You got the egg? It's cool. You can go home now. Quest over. <laughs> the game is surprisingly good at subverting expectations. Even though there's literally a point near the end of the game where one of the characters tells you exactly what's gonna happen, and then it happens, somehow every story beat still carries a huge emotional impact. I think it's just because we've gotten so accustomed to certain things in games, when they just skip over a clear opportunity for a boss fight like this, others might see it like, why isn't there a boss fight here? Did they just forget to put it in? This game's unfinished. I see it as a unique artistic choice, and I'm perfectly fine with it because it's about the journey, not the destination. I think that sums up this game perfectly, actually. While traveling up the mountain, I still got to have all the fun of a normal, good game. Fun enemies to fight, good music, some very nice scenery to look at, and some fun dialogue on top of it all. Why do I ever leave my car seat? The dialogue in FF15 is so relatable. There's no one walking around spouting, Thou art the chosen one, or Thou mustn't attempt to dethrone the Falci until thou hast absorbed the arcane mana from the ancient shrine of Anubis. Except for Scar here. Most of the characters in FF15 are just like, Yo, Nacht, I need you to go to the royal tombs and get the royal arms because they'll give you superpowers and stuff. Maybe I'm just a small brain, but I'd take normal talk over that Shakespearean stuff any day of the week. Open world games get a lot of flack these days from being these giant maps with huge, sprawling environments, but then having nothing to do in them. Personally, I don't see it. Most of the open world games I've played in the last decade or so have had plenty to do in them, and FF15 is no exception. They give you plenty of quests, whether it's your typical fetch quest, or slay quest, or exploring certain areas, or taking photos, or feeding a cat, or buying certain items from a particular vendor. And in between that, you can ride chocobos, ride and customize your car, turn your car into a giant monster truck that can drive around everywhere and bounce off of bridges. You can go camping, fishing, hiking, take more photos. It's like all the freedom of real life, but with anime pretty boys. And I love it. The game is fully voiced, and while there aren't a lot of characters to interact with in the wild areas, there are a ton of them in all the towns and cities, all with unique and interesting things to say. Especially Prompto. He has plenty of things to say. Oh, hi there, opening! <laughs> Every night before you go to bed, Iggy's all like, What do you guys want to eat? And you're all like, I want a filet mignon. And he's like, too bad, you're getting ramen. But other times you're like, Iggy, I want toast. And he's like, here's your toast. This campfire music. It's so good. One thing I will say about the end of the game, some slight near end game spoilers ahead. I would have been happy if the game had ended here. This fight with perfect chaos is a perfect ending. It's so cinematic and dramatic. It's a fun and climactic battle and you accomplish what I saw as the main goal of the game, meeting up with Luna Freya. Sure, there's still Arden to take care of, but they could have combined his fight with this one, and I think it would have been a fine ending. But there's even more stuff after it. After this is when the game starts getting more linear, but honestly, I think it fits. The game could have ended here, and I would have been happy. The fact that I'm able to spend a few more hours with these characters, even if it's while being led down these linear set pieces, it's fine. It's just more engaging story content. And the same can be said about the DLC. Maybe it was originally supposed to be part of the main game, but I thought what the main game offered in and of itself was easily worth $60. Heck, I thought just the stuff before the Leviathan fight was worth $60. Games are huge nowadays, with crazy good graphics that take an astronomically large amount of time to make, compared to the games we were playing 20 years ago. And the fact that we're still able to get them for anywhere near the price we were paying back then is kind of insane to me. But that's a topic for a whole nother video. I'm happy to pay a few extra bucks for the amount of stuff they give you. It's not like they just give you some extra weapons or cosmetic packs. They give you these big extra chunks of story, fun new gameplay styles, the ability to play as different characters under completely different scenarios than what you're used to from the main game, making it even more fun and interesting, and you get to spend even more time with these four guys that I personally think are just the greatest. The DLC even manages to make playing as William Shakespeare himself fun, by letting you explore this giant city- whoa, where did this come from? Yeah, the sheer amount of content offered to you by Final Fantasy XV is kind of overwhelming, but if you really enjoy it and get into it, it's like the perfect package. While others may see it as, what, I have to watch a whole movie and an anime series before getting into this game? I see it as, 
Just look at all this cool stuff I can do and watch relating to one of my new favorite games of all time. But enough of me gushing. What do you guys think of Final Fantasy XV? Have you played it? If so, have you enjoyed it? What do you think the best ingredient in the ramen is? I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching! Well, put it in the books.